the school for scandal who all study in this school who is the headmaster or the mistress of this school we'll come to know hello how are you this is hina from team walad today's play of discussion a very light hearted comedy or new comedy of manners is the school for scandal written by richard b sheridan the school for scandal was premiered or produced for the first time in 1777 whereas it was published in the year 1780 genre as i told you is new comedy of manners and literary period of the school for scandal is it's a georgian comedy setting is london england in the year 1777 and if you talk about the number of acts the school for scandal has five acts the play in five acts okay let's start before that major characters of the play only listen to the name do not think much do not be afraid lady sneerwell peter teasel Lady Teasel, they are husband and wife. Joseph Surface and Charles Surface are brothers. Sir Oliver Surface is their uncle. Maria is the lover of Charles. Minor characters or the gossip mongers are Sir Benjamin Backbite, Mrs. Scandour, Mr. Crabtree. Then there is a person called Harry Bumper. Then there is Careless, Rowley, Snake, Trip, Moss. Easy. अभी सब इजी लगेगा डोंट वरी लेट स्टार्ट विद एक्ट वन द सेटिंग इज ड्रेसिंग रूम ऑफ लेडीज नियर वेल लेडीज नियर वेल इज अ गॉसिप मॉन्गर शी इज अ यंग अ वेल्दी विडो who has no work in life other than spreading rumors yes lady near well only spreads rumors in the form of can you imagine she even sends forged letters kisi ke naam ka letter kisi ko bhej deti hai she even writes you know false columns she pays money to write false columns in the papers wo bhidati hai logo ko lady near well is this a personality who loves to make people fight who loves to spread rumors and her rumors are very effective they spread like wild fire now for this purpose she has hired a boy who is very greedy whose name is snake imagine snake okay snake actually denotes being a snake okay he's like that vicious character who is greedy and who wants that people should fight and who works for money for lady near well now the next rumor that lady snearwell is going to spread around is regarding the surface brothers there are two surface brothers joseph surface the elder one and charles surface the younger one what is the reason behind this the reason is that she loves charles she wants charles to herself and therefore she is ready to spread this rumor before the rumor that she is going to spread let me make you meet the surface brothers first joseph surface Joseph Surface is the older brother as i told you who pretends to be a man of sentiment a very well cultured very good mannered boy but on the surface their surname is surface connect joseph surface on the surface is very nice but beneath beneath the surface joseph is greedy and evil and vicious the society however sees जो सामने दिखता है वैसा हमको लगता है राइट सो फॉर द सोसाइटी जोसेफ इज दिस मॉरल पर्सन इन फैक्ट अ वेरी वेल्दी पर्सन इन द प्ले कॉल्ड सर पीटर टीजल एडमायर्स जोसेफ सर्फ इज सो मच ही थिंक्स जोसेफ हैज अ ट्रू कैरेक्टर बट एज आई टोल्ड यू ऑल दिस अबाउट जोसेफ इज ऑन द सर्फिस आफ्टर दिस लेट्स मीट द यंगर ब्रदर चार्ल्स सर्फिस the younger brother who is a party hopper who loves to party who loves to drink who loves to gamble who is always under debt he has actually sold almost everything that belonged to his family for the sake of money art fashion but all this is on the surface actually sheridan is criticizing the society of that time when you want to be so extravagant that you're ready to take money from others when you're very poor but to the world you show that you're rich charles is just like that he pretends to be very rich you know he's always under debt he does not have money in his pocket he's always taking credit or loan but sheridan has now shown charles all this to be on the surface 
beneath the surface, Sheridan has portrayed Charles as a person of gold. That is, Charles is kind, gentle-natured, unpretentious. He does not have any pretensions, okay? Jo andar hai, wo bahar hai. That is how Charles is. But the society condemns him. Society loves Joseph, remember? Society condemns Charles for his extravagant lifestyle, for his luxurious living, lot of spending. In fact, Charles has spent all the money that his rich uncle, around 12,000 pounds, his rich uncle, Sir Oliver Surface, had sent him from India. Wo bhi sab uda diya. Udao kisam ka admi hai Charles. <laughs> About Charles' love life, as I told you at the start of the play, Lady Sneerwell, the gossip monger, loves Charles. But no, Charles truly is in love with a young girl called Maria. And Maria is a young heiress to whom? Let's listen about Maria. Maria is an orphan and therefore she's under the care of this person called Sir Peter Teasel. She's the ward of Sir Peter Teasel. Sir Peter Teasel is like Maria's guardian. Now, after Sir Peter, Maria is going to inherit Sir Peter's fortune. So, she's like this young heiress to Sir Peter's fortune. Maria, character-wise, is very sensitive and very moral. Although she belongs to this company of Lady Sneerwell, the Teasel family, but she hates gossip. Wherever gossip is happening, she just runs away from that place. And just like Charles is in love with Maria, Maria also is in love with Charles. It is like that, you know, equal relationship, but there's a problem. Joseph wants to marry Maria. The older brother wants to marry Maria. Joseph does not want that Charles should get Maria. Whereas Lady Sneerwell, as I told you, wants Charles. Easy till here. I'm making sense, right? Let's move on. Lady Sneerwell and Joseph, they are very good gossip mongers and they are very good plotters. So now they are plotting a scheme. What are they plotting? The two, Lady Sneerwell and Joseph, they spread the rumor that Lady Teasel, the young wife, the young beautiful wife of Sir Peter Teasel, is having an affair with Charles. Peladia market mein, Lady Teasel and Charles are having an affair. Oh God. The Teasel family, as I told you, consists of the Teasel couple, Lady Teasel, Sir Peter Teasel, and their ward, Maria. Sir Peter Teasel is an old man who did not marry for years together. But after all these years, he felt lonely and wanted a wife. So just seven months before, he has married this girl from the countryside who is now called Lady Teasel. So Sir Peter Teasel and Lady Teasel are husband and wife. But they have a problem in their married life. Sir Peter Teasel, because he was living all alone all these years, thinks that I'm always right. I am the boss of the house. Why do you spend so much on everyday things, you Lady Teasel? So, Sir Peter Teasel is inflexible, bossy, argumentative. Whereas Lady Teasel wants to spend money. She's luxurious. She wants a good lifestyle. Okay. And she's always ready to argue with Sir Peter. And Sir Peter likes it. He kind of secretly admires his wife. Samne se jagarte hai, piche se admire karte hai, ye hai Sir Peter Teasel. But their marriage is very rocky, okay? They keep on arguing. In the play, they are shown like this arguing couple, always saying, I'll leave you, I'll leave you, I'm going away, I'm going away. That's how the Teasel couple is. Lady Teasel, as I told you, is young, beautiful, wife of Sir Peter, quite intelligent, knows how to argue right with her husband. Their marriage is not going good. Here the theme is marriage. Although she was born in the countryside, she was raised in that conservative manner, near to the nature, nicely. But as she came to the city after marriage, she has become very good friends with Lady Sneerwell, the gossip monger. And together they spread gossips, they chit-chat, they gossip. Okay? Now, a little bit about Lady Teasel. Because she's not happy with her husband, she's considering, only considering, she's considering to have an affair with Joseph. Lazy Te Lady Teasel is thinking that I want, you know, just for fashion's sake, because I'm not happy in my marriage, I want to have an affair with this Joseph. And Joseph also, this double standard guy, at one place, he's trying to woo Maria. Remember, Joseph tries to woo Maria. 
and on the at the other place he actually tries to woo lady teasel also because he can't say no to lady teasel <laughs> can you imagine so lady teasel is considering to having an affair with joseph okay because she loves to spend money on luxury unlike her husband the gossip spreads like wildfire what gossip that charles is having an affair with lady teasel here listen to the other names of gossip mongers in this play along with lady sneerwell and joseph and snake there are other gossip mongers like sir benjamin backbite mrs candour mr crabtree they all quickly spread the rumor that charles and lady teasel are having an affair mr backbite is also interested in maria just like joseph whereas mrs candour speaks ironically and famous lines from the play are quote tail bearers are as bad as tail makers tail bearers are as bad as the tail makers Mrs. Candu herself is a tail maker and a tail bearer. That's an ironic statement, right? Now, the setting is the Teasel's home. As usual, the argument between the husband and wife is going on. Sir Peter is arguing with his wife about her spendthrift ways. She loves to spend money on flowers, crockery, food, carriage, going here and there, clothes. Just then, Rowley. who is like a confidant of sir peter and ex steward of sir phis's papa he arrives and informs sir peter that his ward maria has rejected joseph whereas she is blindly in love with charles and you know sir peter loves joseph hates charles so he's like maria is my ward i am not going to let her marry this stupid charles i am going to force her request her to marry joseph easy after this sir oliver surface returns from the east indies i told you joseph and charles have this rich uncle who helped them who has been in the east indies for 16 years you know he's now arriving in england rowley informs sir peter that sir oliver his close friend sir peter's close friend has just arrived from the east indies but Sir Oliver has instructed not to announce his arrival to his nephews that is Joseph and Charles why because he wants to test them he wants to make some trial of their dispositions as you know sir oliver is going to distribute his inheritance between his nephews joseph and charles so sir oliver wants to test their virtue sir oliver wants to test their character kya ye mere inheritance ke layak hai bhi nahi क्या मैं इनको अपनी वारिस में से कुछ इच्छा यू you नो know, कुछ जगह दू या नहीं माई यूजिंग टू मच हिंदी टूडे बट ओके वॉट एवर सर ऑलिवर इज जस्ट ट्राइंग टू फिगर आउट दैट हिज डिसीजन ऑफ गिविंग हिज इनहेरिटेंस टू हिज नेफ्यूज जोसेफ एंड चार्ल्स इज ही करेक्ट ही विल टेस्ट दैम ओके हियर लेट स्टार्ट विद एक्ट टू सेटिंग इज लेडी स्नियर वेल्स होम At Lady Sneerwell's house, the Teasel family arrives. The scandal mongers, everyone makes fun of those who are not present here. Lady Teasel, as I told you, enjoys all this with Lady Sneerwell, but Sir Peter and Maria are appalled. They don't like this gossip, Baba. Joseph is present here. He tries to seduce Maria. He just bends down and you know uh, tries to hold Maria's hand, but Maria just moves back. and lady teasel sees all this maria goes out lady teasel comes she is a little confused that you know is joseph trying to double play is joseph trying to woo maria but joseph says there's nothing like this and then he, he tries to praise lady teasel to woo her etc old friends chit chat sir oliver surface who has now arrived in england calls on his friend sir peter teasel they talk about marriage because oliver says peter how did you marry after all these years blah blah and also peter tells him about charles and joseph peter tells him charles is not good joseph is very good so somewhere oliver has also you know if if i tell you that this person is good this person is bad you get this picture or image in your mind same way uncle oliver has got this picture through sir peter that charles is extravagant bad natured whereas joseph is very good natured but as i told you oliver will test all this himself with this act 3 enters sir oliver hatches a plan to test his nephew's character 
Sir Oliver decides to test the virtue of Joseph and Charles himself. He will plan to visit them incognito or in different appearances, not as Uncle Oliver, to test their characters. So he goes to meet Charles as a money lender named Mr. Premium. As I told you, Charles is always under debt. Charles always wants credit or loan from money lenders. So Mr. Premium, Moses takes Mr. Premium to Charles house as Mr. Premium or Mr. Oliver, Sir Oliver enters Charles house. Premium describes Charles home as the temple of dissipation or sensual indulgence because as soon as they enter, Charles servant starts to ask for a loan. There are guests of Charles sitting here and there, drinking heavily, singing songs, preparing for a night of gambling. And his uncle, disguised as Mr. Premium, is like, oh God, what house is this? It's a temple of dissipation. Now, after this, Charles confesses his love for Maria, his true love for Maria. He meets Mr. Premium. He does not recognize that he's his uncle. He asks for a loan or a credit. Then Sir Oliver says, I will give you credit. Premium says, I will give you credit, but you have to show me that you have something valuable. To which Charles does not pretend. He says, I don't have anything valuable. In fact, I've already spent the silver of my family, the library of my late father. I have no valuable. All I have are the expensive uh, collection, portrait collection of my family. Sir Oliver or Premium is so angry silently. He's like, Ye apne family ki photo bhi bech hai paise ke liye. You know, he's ready to sell his family's portrait for the sake of money. But then he's quiet. He accepts the offer. And at the start of Act 4, he takes all the portraits. He buys the portraits. He gives the money, like the credit, the loan to Charles. But there is one portrait that Charles is not ready to sell. There's a twist in the play. This portrait belongs to Sir Oliver. So Premium says, give this portrait also to me. Charles says, no, this is of my uncle. He's my benefactor. He has helped me in the past. He's going to help me in the future. You know, I will repay your loan with the money, with the inheritance that I will get from Sir Oliver. No, no, I am not going to sell his portrait. And all of a sudden, Premium or Sir Oliver has a change of heart. Quietly, he forgives Charles for his extravagant ways and comes to a conclusion that Charles, no matter careless, you know, a money spender, a spendthrift, has a grateful heart. With this, Charles' character is tested by his uncle. Okay? Now, let's start with the most famous scene of this play. The name of this scene is the screen scene. What happens here? Lady Teasel, after fighting with her husband, they had a terrible fight and she says, I'm leaving you and going. She goes to Joseph's house. Remember, she's considering having an affair with Joseph, but she's confused whether to cheat her husband and commit this adultery with another man. Joseph assures Lady Teasel that he has no interest in Maria and suggests that Lady Teasel should make this faux pas, should make this terrible mistake of having an affair outside marriage with Joseph. Wow, wow. Just then, the servant of Joseph enters and announces, Sir Peter is coming. Sir Peter is coming. Lady Teasel, oh God. She's the wife of Sir Peter, of course. She's scared. She says, what do I do? What do I do? And Joseph says, okay, okay, go. Just hide behind the screen. Lady Teasel goes and hides behind the screen, whereas her husband, Sir Peter Teasel, enters. This is the screen scene. After this, the closet scene. Sir Peter enters. As I told you, he's very fond of Joseph. He likes Joseph. He comes and confesses that, you know, I suspect, I doubt that my wife has an affair with Charles because there is a news around that my wife is having an affair with Charles. Although I trust her, I don't trust Charles, but I trust my wife. Just then, you know, there's a scene. He sees that behind who? Sir Peter sees that behind the screen, there is a petticoat. And he says, who's there? So Joseph is like, Are, wow, are ye iski bivi hai? you know, she's his wife. He says, I'm not as virtuous as I look. This is like a French milliner. A French milliner is like a lady who makes hats and I'm having an affair with her because she does not want to reveal her identity. She's hiding there. So Sir Peter says, okay, okay. And just then a servant enters again and announces, Charles is here. Your brother is here, Joseph. Your brother is here. 
So Peter Teasel is angry at Charles and he says, I am going and hiding in the closet. I want to hear what this Charles says. The wife is hiding behind the screen. The husband is hiding in the closet. And now the surface brothers will meet. At Joseph's house, Charles enters. Joseph questions Charles about Lady Teasel, that you're having an affair with Lady Teasel. Charles denies, saying, boss, brother, I don't have any affair with Lady Teasel. In fact, it is you who is trying to be intimate with her. I know it. And Joseph is like, shh, shh. Don't speak any further. Sir Peter is hiding in the closet. Charles is like, I'm not scared. I'm going to open the closet. Let Sir Teasel out. Sir Teasel is brought out. And Sir Teasel now all of a sudden regrets. He actually believes that Charles is not having any affair with his wife. Lady Teasel is also hearing all this. And just then, can you imagine? This is very awesome. You know, the servant announces that Lady Sneerwell is coming. Joseph is now scared. Ki no more guests in my house. Joseph rushes out to stop Lady Sneerwell from coming up. Lady Sneerwell from coming up. Whereas, uh, you know, Mr. Teasel, Peter Teasel tells Charles that, can you see that petticoat, petticoat behind the screen? It's a French girl who's having an affair with Joseph. Charles is like, let's go, let's go, let's go. Just pull the screen. They bring the screen down and it is Lady Teasel standing there. The Teasel couple are so shocked at this meet meeting. But Lady Teasel literally is in tears. She's like, I distrusted my husband. He loves me. I love you, my husband. She cries and she leaves. With this act five, the last act of the school for scandal begins. Here, Oliver goes in disguise to meet Joseph. Remember till now, he went to Charles. He tested his character. Abhi Joseph is still remaining. So Oliver disguises as a poor relative of the family called Mr. Stanley. Joseph meets Mr. Stanley. He does not recognize that it's his uncle. He greets him with utter respect. As I told you on the surface, Joseph is very kind and gentle and good mannered. He treats him with utter respect. But when Mr. Stanley asks for some help, for some money, Joseph says, I don't have any money. I gave all my money to this, my brother Charles. And then, you know, um, Mr. Stanley says that if Sir Oliver would have been here, he would have definitely helped me. To which Joseph says, no, no, don't trust Uncle Oliver. He's very stingy. He's never helped me in the past. He's not going to give me anything from his inheritance. He just fools us with stupid gifts, teal bags and, you know, showpieces from East Indies. No, no, he's a very bad person. Mr. Stanley, who is Uncle Oliver, is so angry at Joseph. He has helped him in the past. He's going to help him in the future. He thinks in his heart, Beta, ab to tujhe kuch nahi milega. You're not going to get anything from my inheritance. And with this, Sir Oliver or Mr. Stanley leaves. The truth comes out. At Sir Peter's house, after because at Sir Peter's house, all the rumor mongers are sitting right now. They are thrown out because Sir Oliver comes. Sir Peter and Sir Oliver are very good friends. They meet after so many years. Sir Oliver tells him all about you know, the character testing of his nephews about his decision, what he's going to do with his inheritance. And before leaving, Sir Oliver laughs and says, Peter, I know all about the screen and the closet. <laughs> we also know. The Teasel's couple reconcile after this. As I told you, Lady Teasel has realized her mistake. She's in tears. So Sir Peter reconciles with her. The couple realize they love each other. Lady Sneerwell still is not stopping. She attempts for the last time to get Charles to herself. What does she do? She hires Snake as a witness of a lustful relationship between Charles and Lady Sneerwell. Lady Sneerwell tells Snake that go spread the rumor, I'm having an affair with Charles and you have seen it. This news reaches Maria, Charles' lover, and she's distraught. She's very sad and angry at Charles. Maria says, I'm not going to marry Charles. He's having an affair with Lady Sneerwell. After this, Sir Oliver meets his nephews, and the nephews are confused. Charles says, oh, premium. Joseph says, oh, Mr. Stanley. But Oliver says, no, beta, I'm your uncle. Hoon. The cloud of confusion is cleared. Joseph is ashamed. Charles is happy. And Lady Sneerwell is exposed at the end of the play. How? Sir Oliver, Sir Peter, Lady Teasel, they all condemn Joseph. 
whereas Sir Oliver forgives Charles and makes him the sole heir to his inheritance. After this, Maria says, whatever, even if Charles has got all the money of Uncle Oliver, I'm not going to marry Charles because he's having an affair with Lady Sneerwell. Here, Joseph has a change of heart because everyone has condemned him so much. He says, every, you know, the person behind all this rumor spreading is none other than Lady Sneerwell. I can vouch Lady Sneerwell does not have an affair with Charles. So everything is clear. Charles at the end gets Maria. Charles makes no false promises that I'm going to change for the good. He just says that if Maria is with me, I am going to choose a virtuous path. And the play The School for Sandal ends with this line, even scandal dies if you approve. Even scandal dies if you approve. So yeah. Achha hai. <laughs> this is Hina from Team Walat, a very light-hearted comedy. You saw nobody was punished like punished. It was a good-natured comedy, just condemning people, just like, you know, hitting them at the back. Kyu kiya? Kyu kiya? Hana? Kind of like that. This is Hina from Team Walat. Take very good care of yourself. Bye-bye.